Right before we jump into this video, if you haven't signed up for the Fronos Photo email list, just look for this orange box over on the website, put your name, email address in it, hit send it, and I will send you a free guide to capturing motion in low light situations. Jared Poland, fronosphoto.com, and this is a review of Canon's 85 1.2 RF Beast of a lens. Now, before I get into the sample images, which you can download, by the way, the link is up on the screen as well as down below. We're gonna analyze those in just a second. I took this lens out onto a movie set. Our friend Todd Wolf is filming a movie called We Need to Talk, and I'm the set photographer, so I get to go there, take pictures, and do whatever I need to do, including testing out this lens. Now, I did shoot with the EOS R because that is the, well, the highest version model of a camera that Canon has for shooting mirrorless. So that's exactly what I used. Now I shot silent for some of it because I was on a movie set, even though I was in between takes for some of the shots, as well as during another day, I got to shoot portraits outside at 100 ISO at 1.2 of one of the other actors just to get some more sample images. But now let's take a look at the old lens and tell you a little bit more about it. The old 85 version two F 1.2 was big heavy, slow, and was very difficult to hit at f1.2. I know from using it, I had to take multiple shots in a row to hope that I hit at 1.2, and I just found that it missed quite often because 1.2 is super shallow, whereas you're gonna see with 1.2 with this lens, and the mirrorless camera that 1.2 just became much easier to hit at, meaning this lens right here can go away. Oh geez, was I supposed? Anyway, let's take a look at the new 85 1.2 RF. This is a 2.6 pound lens. It is one third heavier than the old 85 1.2. It's one inch taller and it's also one inch girthier. Thank you for making a girthier lens. Let's sniff it. Reed Rothschild and Dirt Diggler. Oh, thank you, Eddie. In terms of blades, there are nine blades in this, first eight blades in the older one. It also has an 82 millimeter filter thread instead of 72 of the older one. It does not have IS, but I wouldn't expect a lens like this to have IS built in because prime lens are just gonna be much sharper without having floating elements in them. But with that being said, the EOS R does not have IBIS inside of it, meaning you gotta make sure your shutter speeds are fast enough to counteract any movement that you might have so that you don't get motion blur at 1.2 because you're using too slow of a shutter speed. Continuing with the outside of the lens, you have a control ring right here, which you can set to change your ISO, your aperture, some other things that you would like to change. I have it deactivated because I don't wanna accidentally hit it and have it make some changes. And what was funny is I found myself shooting at 1.4 by accident and I couldn't remember how to change the aperture on this camera. I'm looking for a spin wheel like used to be on the back. Well, that's not there. And then I finally realized, oh, it's this dial back here. And so I turned it to 1.2. There are two switches on the outside of the lens. One is manual to autofocus and the other is a focus limiter. So you can limit how quickly it focuses from front to back. Cause if you don't want it to hunt all the way, you can go ahead and click that switch. And this is the back of the lens. Now it's time to throw the, I'm, I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna throw the lens. Jared will not throw the lens. Why? Because this is $2,700. The old lens currently sells for 1,849 bucks, which was expensive. It used to be more expensive, but $2,700. Canon thinks that this stuff is gold. But what I will tell you is that these RF lenses are absolutely fantastic. But the one thing holding back these RF lenses from being even better, the bodies. We don't have professional bodies just yet with professional quality. The quality out of the EOS R is fine, 
but it's not the top of the line cameras that you're expecting to go with the top of the line lenses. Now let's move in to the sample images, starting with this set photo. Now this is at f1.2, 1 500th of a second. We are at 1600 ISO. Now the reason I'm showing this sample image is I want to see if there is any fringing or aberrations that are coming in because we have a strong backlight coming in through the window. I don't see any issues around the edges of these frames. Now you can download the raw file to see if you can find it in any of this, but it did a great job and that's probably a testament to the new coatings that Canon is putting on their lenses. They made a whole propaganda video about it and how it works. You can watch that. It's actually pretty good if you can stay awake for it. But let's move on to the next image. This was where I shot at 1.4, but the contrast and the tones and the focus is super tight and super gorgeous. I just loved this image. This is the DP, so the director of photography. I could photograph him and share these images, and it's just awesome shooting on set and also being able to shoot silent with the EOS R. 1.2, zoom in. Look at the reflection in the eye. I found that with the Canons, even the old 85-1.2, I found myself focusing in on the eye, and then what ends up happening is it, it it's so good at autofocus that it gets the reflection, and that's in focus, which makes everything else look out of focus. Uh, but that's just the nature of shooting with this camera. Now, you may be wondering, did I use IAF? And the answer is no. I don't really trust IAF unless it's in a Sony. Uh, I just move the focusing points myself on the back of the screen because I can move them super fast just by pressing my thumb onto the back of the LCD and sliding it over to the eye and moving it around. I didn't have any trouble doing that and time and time again, I was nailing it at F1.2. Portrait, beautiful portrait. I wish my composition was slightly better. The only reason my composition wasn't slightly better here is he was rocking back and forth, which makes it a little more hard to get your composition spot on when the person's moving back and forth, but I love the fall off. Just look at the chin. Look at how the, the hairs on the chin start to fall off. The neck just blows away. The eye is in perfect focus. His mouth is perfectly focused. The ears fade out and the hair fades out. The colors and the tones are sweet. Really love this lens. I love the RF glass. And as I said before, I can't wait for Canon to put out better bodies because what's holding back the better glass are the better bodies. If you're looking for a quicker way to edit your RAW files or just to have a great starting point, we created 14 custom Lightroom presets that you can check out at fronosphoto.com slash presets. While you're there, you can check out the befores and the afters, and if you decide to pick it up right now, they are on sale. Now check out these images which were edited using FroPack 1. So let's continue on to a, ooh, look at this portrait. All right, here we go. Look at the sharpness that we have on this eyeball at 1.2, 1 1640th of a second at 1600 ISO. I can hear the people now, but Jared, you could have been at one, you could have been at 800 ISO and then at 1 320th. I'm like, yeah, sure, I could have. I wasn't. And if this camera can't handle 1600, then you should probably throw it out. No IBIS in there as backup is the reason I shoot at a faster shutter speed and a higher ISO. I'd rather nail the photo and not have something have motion blur and have higher ISO than get motion blur. So super cool portrait. Look at the fall off. You got the background just blowing out and it just, it looks really nice, super tight. And time and time again, like I said, 1.2 was hitting where the 85 1.2 EF would be a little more questionable. And the other question is, would you adapt the 85 1.2 to this camera? And the answer is yes, but it's still gonna be slower focusing than the new RF lens. I would take the RF lens as a full-time professional any day of the week over the older one because it was slow, chunky, even though this is heavier and chodier, I still rather go with this and spend the money. Moving on to the next portrait, I switched into horizontal. Now to set the scene just a little bit, I had this guy sitting on the sofa. They already had it pre-lit with awesome light coming through the windows because it's a movie set, which makes it much easier to photograph and just got a really sweet portrait. I just love 
the fall off. It just, the tones are nice. Uh, it just looks good. And like I said, you can play with the raw files yourself to see if you like them. Then I went back another day because I was able to shoot another actor outside so we could get 100 ISO uh, in the courtyard in between takes with this gentleman right here. And the reason I shot with a more distracting background is because, well, this is where I put him and I'm just telling you that it was a distracting background, but it's good to see at 1.2 what happens to the background so you can get a feel for what's gonna happen full body at 1.2. The, the focus is fast. It doesn't hunt. The old one, this one, you can actually hear it and feel it more so than the other RF lenses, which you really don't know are even focusing because they're so fast, but because this has so much glass in it, it has to move it around. You, you can still feel it and you can still hear it. It's not extremely lightning fast, but it's also not slow where you think you're waiting for it. So beautiful focus, nice bokeh blowing out here in the background. Moving on to the next image, I just changed my angle a little lower and got a little closer. I put him on this in this particular spot to show you that it's a movie set. I want all of the props in the background or all the different light stands and, and reflectors that they had because he's an actor, it's in between takes, and I thought that added to the story. Moving on to the next image, I wanted to get a little closer, fill the frame horizontally, and we got this shot. Let's zoom in, eyeball, super tight, super sharp, super contrast. Really love what I was able to pull out of this and look how the background just blows away. The bokeh looks super sweet for all of you guys who care about that. It looks nice and smooth and nice and clean. That probably has to do with the nine blades over the eight. Not that anybody would actually know the difference even though somebody out there probably knows the difference. I don't care, I just wanna shoot and get good shots. Ooh, look at this portrait. It's like looking up at a distance off to the side. It looks sweet, colors, tones nice. Again, you can see the background doesn't become a distraction at 1.2, but again, I wanna reiterate at 1.2, nailing it time and time again. Now this is interesting because we had a cool brick wall in the background. Usually when you put somebody against the brick wall directly there, the brick wall is gonna be in focus. But even here, as we zoom in, we're focused right on the eye, right on the subject. And you can already see at 1.2, the brick is starting to blow out. When I say blow out, it's getting out of focus. Isn't that crazy? That's what 1.2 gives you. The closer you get to the subject, the more it's gonna compress. But this is a full body portrait and it's still blowing out at 1.2. And now we move into the final portraits. We, we borrowed some lights that were on the movie set just to get these shots. 100 ISO, zooming in on the eye, super tack sharp. You can look at the fall off in the background of all of these portraits. I'm gonna quickly move into the last one, which was a horizontal. Yeah, I wouldn't mess with this guy. Would you mess with this guy? I wouldn't mess with this guy. He's actually standing over there making sure I don't say anything wrong. I don't want any trouble but this is, this is a great shot. I really love, I love the tightness of focus. So as you can tell, this lens is fantastic and it better be for 2,700 bucks. I'm buying this lens if I have an RF system. I do want the better body, of course, but on the EOS R, it's perfectly fine. And if you already have an 85 1.2, I'd probably sell the EF version if you're a full-time pro to go with something like this that is super fast focusing. Even though it's a little larger, it's a lot more expensive. It's just tack sharp at 1.2, even when I'm moving the focusing points manually. So if you're looking to shoot video with a lens like this, it's going to be fantastic if you're doing interviews and you lock it off, or if you're gonna track somebody with dual pixel AF, it's gonna do a fantastic job at 1.2. And don't forget, you do have IAF as it comes to video, and in our tests, it worked out very well. So to wrap all of this up, if you have a mirrorless camera like an EOS R and you're a professional, can you go wrong with this lens? Well, yeah, if you can't afford it, you could go wrong with it, but if you can afford it and you get paid to shoot, you're not gonna go wrong with this lens. Sell the 85-1.2 instead of adapting it to this body, and I think you're gonna be mighty happy. But like I said earlier, the thing that is holding back the quality and greatness of these lenses are the bodies. When we start to get the pro bodies, these RF lenses are gonna be fantastic. I mean, they're already fantastic, but in combination with better bodies, Look, Canon spent all their time and money putting out the lenses first, where I yelled at Nikon for not putting out the lenses first and going with the better body of the, the Z7. 
Cannon went the other way, and when they catch up, look out because Canon's gonna have all the glass and the combination of the bodies, and it's gonna be awesome. So if you'd like to pick up this lens or anything else, head on over to adorama.com slash fro, because when you use that link, it helps us to continue to do what we're doing. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe, and download those raw files to play with them yourself. And that's it, Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com. See ya.